The Mobile Veta Motorhome. It's quite a popular choice for people looking for sort of a mid to high-ish end motorhome. It's not a bad looking thing. They're well spec, they're beautiful inside. But is it really a decent motorhome? Because I've had this thing for 1,512 mile and I've had a ton of problems with it. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all of the issues that I've had with it, the problems I've still got with it, and kind of what my thoughts are on this thing. Because let's be honest, you're spending a good chunk of money and you wanna know what you're getting yourself into. And that's what this video is. Well, first things first, to really get into one of the biggest issues, I need to just take it for a little drive just down the road. And yes, I've left all the lights on. It is what it is. It's a short little country road. And I think quite quickly, you'll understand one of the biggest issues with this thing, because I'm at a point where I'm about to start wearing headphones. Now you might be wondering, what is it that's causing that noise? There's quite a bit of it. Well, I need to, to answer that, I need to figure out which noise you're on about because there's quite a few of them. So I'm just gonna reverse back into the house and then I'll go through it one by one, exactly what's causing the noise because I think I've pinpointed most of it. Although I hope I have, I'm not 100% sure, but fingers crossed, I at least can tell what's causing the noise, whether I can get that fixed or not is a different story because some of the things that are causing the noise, I've been told, it's perfectly normal. That's what they're meant to sound like. Probably the biggest culprit that you heard in that clip was this. This is the fly screen. Now, it's not really got any way of securing it other than it just retracts in, kinda. And this is the noise. As you can see, it just sort of twangs around, bounces off it the entire time. And the only real way of well not fixing it but subduing the noise slightly is to just yank it and bend it all the way around your handle which scratches the handle bends the metal and probably breaks the fly screen and that's what i've been advised as to mark with is something that we can do as a bit of a workaround for the time being however i have been told not to do that long term obviously because it's going to break the whole thing but that's just normal apparently if you wanted to see the very best scenery in all of the uk then we've got you covered with our ultimate Scottish road trip travel guide. Now this road trip can be done in anything. You could drive a truck and you'll get around these roads. It's easy to drive, the scenery's incredible, it's accessible to anyone, pretty much everything's viewpoint, so you can just pull over at the side of the road, take your photo, crack on, move on to the next. You can even do this one in three days. It's available at the link in the description. If you're looking to drive a bit more of an iconic road trip, then we also have you covered with our NC500 Improved. It is the NC500 with a twist. It's a better start and a better end to include more of the iconic parts of Scotland that the normal route misses. If you're doing either of them, you might want to pop to Harris and Lewis to see the best beaches in all of the UK. It's like being in the Caribbean, but probably with crap weather. Then we have Scotland's best island, the Isle of Arran. Beautiful, tiny island. You'll never want to visit anywhere else again once you've been there. I guarantee that. And if you love a little bit of history, we've got our Borderlands 320 mile road trip that snakes backwards and forwards through England and Scotland through historic beautiful countryside. This one is something a little bit special, a little bit different. Now you can save 30% off all of these travel guides by using the code NEWVAN30 until the end of October. Now the next thing, well there's two of them and it's this bed and that bed and I'll show you. So if you have the bed down a little bit it's easier to show you with it down. If I just stand here that bed has got probably half an inch of movement when I lower it down slightly and shake it. So not only when I'm driving does it do that, it actually does that when you're just lying in the bed. So if you move in the middle of the night, it literally wakes the other person up because it's that loud. The front one also does the same thing. Combine both of them and the fly screen. It's loud, it's getting loud, but there's more. So just under the rear bed, there's this shelf. Now, some versions come with these on both sides. We went for this one without because we want the bed to be able to come down lower. However, this, uh, how well you can see it, but that isn't secured either. So that makes a ton of noise. Then there's the next thing, which is actually this. So this is the oven. Now this, and it comes out or in. Whichever way it is, it makes a right racket. Now in that noise, there was a big squeaking noise the entire time in that video that you probably didn't hear because of all the louder noise. Now the squeak itself comes from this bit, the overhead pod, which isn't really bonded very well, and it, it sort of squeaks. So as I'm driving, 
any sort of undulation, anything at all, which obviously there's tons of them on the roads, what we drive, especially the ones in England, that just squeaks the entire time. Now that has been fixed once already, got sort of resealed or rebonded. And within less than five, 600 miles, it was back again. So how they're gonna fix that, I don't know. And is they gonna be able to even fix it at all? I'm not entirely sure, but there's more. I did notice there's an awful lot of road noise, a lot of outdoor noise, as if a window's open or as if a door's not shut properly. Now, my main suspect initially was the door, whether this is even sealed properly. And then Danny noticed, and I hadn't seen them before, these two little buggers. Just two holes, there's now in them. Presumably there's meant to be something in them and they just laid directly outside from the inside of the van So when we were driving it was belting down with rain and I, it kind of sounded like rain was coming in and obviously it wasn't It wasn't wet, but presumably as I was hitting the puddles on that side of the road The noise was just coming directly from them holes presumably I don't know what's meant to be in there whether there's meant to be grommets in there Whether there's meant to be screws or whether there's actually meant to be something attached in there I don't know but one thing I do know is there's no in there at the minute now we need to move to the bathroom where well, obviously there's a few more issues so what you'll notice is this this is a piece of well velcro -y, sticky tape and the reason being is because this door doesn't stay shut when you drive so it just pops open flies and it's definitely going to smash at some point when it keeps hitting that now i think it's the mechanism here isn't sort of tight enough to keep it in very well so the door does just open at first, I just presumed one of us was not shutting it properly because every time we pulled up somewhere, it was open. But I think with the sort of swing and the weight of the door, because it's got quite a bit of weight on it's a proper mirror, that the sort of weight causes it to knock itself open. So now they're going to fix that, whether they're going to have to tighten it up or what, I'm not 100% sure. But there's another couple of problems in here, and this is the first one I want to show you. So if I just pop the tap on... Now it's not going to really show you very well because it's water and it's a white sink but the the floor and the sink just doesn't really drain barely at all so the plugs just there's no blockages that I'm aware of it might maybe there's a twist in the pipe or something I'm not sure this one isn't quite as bad the one in the kitchen but the ones in the bathroom are horrendous. So we actually have to limit how long we're in the shower based on just looking at the floor and how quickly it's filling up because if that fills, it's just gonna spill straight into the sort of living area. So we're having, to, and the shower is quite a powerful shower. Uh, so we have to limit how much time we spend in there just purely because the floor fills up. Um, the next one is actually the shower as well. So I'll show you that. So the shower is behind here. Now you might notice that the, the sort of jet bits if it's in the wrong way and that's because you have to sort of twist it to loosen it to point it the right way because when it's on fully the way it's meant to be tight it faces the wrong way so by opening it that way it actually just half of the water just pours down here rather than coming out of these because you've had to sort of loosen the seal just to get it to face the correct way so that's another thing that's gone wrong in this thing before i forget to mention this is actually another culprit for rattling Now I do understand that there's going to be people jumping in the comments saying, oh, well, that's not Mobile Vetter's fault. It's Thetford that make the oven. Well, that's not Mobile Vetter's fault. It's such and such who make this. But unfortunately, the book has to stop with the manufacturer. They picked all of the things that go in this van. And don't get us wrong, I would love for all of this to be rosy and perfect because it's me van and I've just bought it and I love it. But unfortunately, it's not. And the truth is the truth at the end of the day, whether I like it or not. I would love to say this is the most perfect van in the world. And it's not, it just isn't. And I would love for it to be fixed and hopefully it will be fixed and maybe it's just mine. But I'm just telling you what my experience is like with this van. But there has been some other issues which I've already had to have repaired or fixed and some of them are fixed, some of them are not. So I'm gonna go through a comprehensive list of all of them things. So what issues have we got then? We've got a few and we've it's already been in for some. So there's actually been more than this. So I'll quickly recap over the issues that I had previously. And I need to go on my phone because there's a few. So the overhead roof light wasn't sealed and it was making this noise as I drove. 
Yeah, brutal. And it's it's kind of been fixed. The window hasn't been adjusted. It just the, the latches got moved down slightly, so it pulls it tighter. The glass is still, well, plastic, still a little bit off-center, so I don't know if that's going to come back and bite us further down the line. The internal door handle, this happened to it. And as you can see, that didn't work very well. In fact, it didn't work at all. It was the first day we took it away and that door handle broke. The travel seat stopper, which again, my son just sat on it and the, the screw fell out. That's been fixed, but that was broke previously. Literally of one 10 year old kid sitting on it, it just snapped off and they've had to bolt it through. So if you get one of these, you might as well take it out because it's gonna fall off the second you put any weight on it at all. The overhead pod has already been in to be fixed. The one that I told you was squeaking and it did get fixed in about 200 mile later it was squeaking again so now they're going to fix that long term but that is a problem the door retainer doesn't hold the door now i know they're about six quid to buy and you just screw them in but really should i have to i mean i have bought one i suppose so that kind of answers that but it shouldn't be broke really should it it should hold the door that's literally the only job it's got but anyway um the glove box doesn't fit which i'm not that bothered about so to accompany the original issues We've got more. So the current issues, the additional ones, the ones I've went through, we've got obviously the bit under the bed at the back, that rattles all the time. Both of the beds move a lot. Now these seem to have gotten worse, if I'm honest, since we first got it. They, they move a lot more. You can move them kind of freely, a lot easier by your hand. Um, the door, I'm certain this door isn't sealed properly. I just don't think it is. You can kind of feel a cold breeze coming in as you're driving. Um, the holes at the bottom of the door, I'm guessing they're not meant to be there. There's just two empty little gaps full of wind and cold air. And when you're driving, it's raining. It literally sounds like you've got the door open because you can hear the wind and the rain under the van. Um, obviously, the mirror door in the bathroom, it doesn't shut. It doesn't stay shut. It literally swings about. I've had to sellotape it shut. The shower head, which literally faces the ceiling. So unless you do your handstand when you get in the shower, that ain't gonna be working for anyone. Then there's the plug holes. Literally, you're on a timer when you get in that shower, you need to be quick, otherwise you're gonna flood your full floor. Now I've been told that this is a kind of normal thing and that sometimes they drain a bit slow, but that's taking the mick. I can't even have a shower because the drain slower than the water comes out of the shower head, which is a bit of a joke. Um, the water pump, now the water pump, I have tried to replicate that since I started shooting this video, but haven't really been able to because it seems to be behaving itself now when before this is what it sounded like i thought i was being shot at and the whole van vibrated as well it was quite a loud thing previously whether that's fixed now or not i don't know but it used to sound like that then there's the squeaking which is just miraculously came back then there's the thing above the oven that thing which makes a ton of noise and then i took a photo of the van from this angle which fair enough it's not a very nice photo but when i zoomed in i noticed this is there meant to be like an under tray thing there or some sort of bit of trim because that just looks a bit weird i feel like that's meant to be there so yeah that's missing as well so what we're gonna do i don't know i do like it i love it in fact and i've got it booked in to get a lot of things modified but there's a lot of issues that need sorting, a ton of issues that need sorting. And Mark was gonna have to sort them because you cannot drive something that sounds as loud as this. It isn't normal and it's not okay. If I spent 90,000 quid on this, which I didn't, I bought this one for 75 because it was an ex-demo and people have been climbing in and out and all the rest of it. And that might be it, could well be that, why things are gone wrong. But considering it had six miles on the clock and people had just been getting in and out outside, for all of these things to then be gone wrong, that's even more alarming because it hadn't even been used properly. So just be mindful, if you're buying something like this, you may get these issues. Now, you might not, and yours might be perfect, and that's great, I hope it is, I wish mine was. I'm not saying that they're crap, I'm just saying this is the experience I've had. And now whenever people put these kind of things on there, everyone jumps on the bandwagon trying to defend them because they've got one. Mine's perfect, yours must be this. You've done this wrong, you've done that wrong. This is the ownership, this is honesty, that's what this is. This is me, I would love to just say it's perfect. Obviously I've got one, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be like, mine's perfect, yours is blah, 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 but I can't because this isn't perfect. I've had loads of issues with it already and I'm just trying to be honest and trying to open your eyes that if you are looking for something like this, you never know what's gonna happen. You might get one like this and it might be a dog because this kind of is up to now and I'm quite disappointed with it. 